that they can do is start monitoring their supply chain. So taking the data that they do have. What is the latest thinking on supply chain risk? I'm going to find out today in my conversation with Matt Mills. He is Director of Supply Chain Solutions with Resilink. Matt, welcome. Thanks, Paul. Matt, what have you seen in the last couple of years in terms of the changing attitude that companies have toward the whole topic of supply chain risk? Um, I've, I've seen a lot of changing attitudes. Um, you have definitely a, a number of kind of industry leaders who have taken a really um, aggressive approach to addressing the risk by employing you know, technology and data to address it, um, and, and particularly in, in using third-party solutions to, to do so. I think there's, a, there's definitely a, a movement toward um, more tr supply chain transparency and understanding more about your supply chains. Then on the other end of the solution, you have other companies who are kind of standing by the wayside, um, trying to, maybe they see their customers doing things, maybe they see their suppliers doing things, uh, maybe they see their, their customers asking for things, and they're not really sure where to start. So um, one of the, one of the, the challenges um, is, you know, how do, we, how do we bring some of those earlier customers along? Um, uh, such that they can you know, catch up with, with their competitors. Yeah, well, let me ask you about that. I mean, the attitude is changing and a lot of companies are becoming more aware, but what about these folks that are being left behind? How has that happened and why and what can we do well, about that? I mean, that? I, think there's, I think there's a couple of approaches that the companies have taken so far. The, the first is kind of the wait and see. Uh, my team's super smart, we'll just figure it out approach, right? Um, and, 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 th and that works for a while. Um, I had an old boss that says it, it works until it doesn't. Um, but the reality is that it used to be very costly and very resource intensive to employ technology to solve these problems, but that's not true anymore. So there's really no excuse not to, not to collect data, not to, to use technology solutions to, to do it efficiently um, and, and make sure that your resources are employed not only in um, collecting the data and addressing their risk, but also in you know, getting back to their day jobs when, when, when risk is no longer an issue and not spending time building homegrown solutions. I can imagine that the executives at the supply chain management level probably have a keen awareness of the need for risk, but what about the executive suite? What about top management? You've got to get buy-in from them too. Do you think Absolutely. they are fully aware of the importance of this issue? Um, I think they're aware of it. Um, I think when, when things like Hurricane Maria or Hurricane Harvey happen, um, they're always asking the questions, right? So um, how do they understand, you know, in their supply chain? And, and, and once, the, once it starts to hit the bottom line or the, or the top line, um, that's when they really get concerned. Um, but sometimes the message gets lost in translation, right? So uh, you have executives that might be concerned about the, the, about the problem, um, but then they have supply chain people that maybe aren't, don't have an idea about how to, how to solve the problem. So, um, you know, you know, risk is one of those things that, um, Sometimes people have to take the approach of it, ignore it and it'll go away. And I always like to say there's, there's a lot of efficiency in that type of ignorance, right, where you're not spending money. Um, but the reality is, again, it works until it doesn't. Well, it seems like a very complex issue to get your arms around all at once. What are some steps that some of these companies could take, the ones that are a little bit laggard uh, th these days? What's like the easiest thing, the first thing they could do in order to get their arms around this topic? Oh, I think the first thing they can do is start monitoring their supply chain. So taking the data that they do have, um, putting it into a, a technology solution and, um, that, that can you know, monitor you know, multiple thousands of news sources and, and try to apply that data uh, to their to, to buy that and structured data to their their structured supply chain data so that they know immediately when something occurs what part site suppliers are impacted and then they can start to build best practices around uh, crisis management response. Well, what do you mean when you say monitoring? I'm sure a lot of these companies will say, well, of course we monitor our supply chains. We you know that's the, the very heart of our companies. But you're talking about something deeper than maybe a lot of these companies are doing. Is it like a question of multi-tier supplier visibility? What type of monitoring is well, necessary? I think I, I don't think it has to start at multi-tier. I think that's that's the aspirational area you have to get to. I, I think it starts with what do I know um, and how can I apply? How can I draw the the association between what's happening in my supply chain and what's happening in the outside world. Um, and you know, and that, that can be as simple as, as a Google search, but a Google search is not sufficient because you, you're putting yourself at a competitive disadvantage to those companies that have very sophisticated, but you know, relatively um, easy to implement and scalable solutions uh, that, that are monitoring much more than, than just a, a Google search. They're monitoring you know, government sources and um, news sources and social media and all these types of things that if you tried to do it yourself um, would, would cost a lot of resources, but um, you could buy something off the shelf. To, to I guess you could argue that in the age of big data, there's no excuse for not being able to monitor so much information. But on the other hand, there's almost 
too much information out there. So it really becomes a question of sifting through and finding what the relevant information is from your suppliers. And I guess that's a challenge, is it not? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of the things you want to look for in a solution is something that's going to reduce that noise and give you not only information that's relevant to supply chains, um, but also relevant information that's relevant to your supply chain. So again, being able to, to take you know, the big unstructured data of all the things that are happening in the world, trimming it down to the, the structured data that, that's within your supply chain and, and making that connection, uh, that's really the, the key to success to, to get started and it's, it's not hard to do. Okay, so this monitoring gives you a sense of just what kind of an animal your supply chain yeah. is. So you're prepared maybe better when something bad happens to know what to do. But then you got to take that extra step and you've got to take defensive mechanisms in order to position yourself better to withstand these events happening. So right. talk a little bit about what those might be. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's really taking that, that same structured supply chain data and, and understanding more about it, whether that's applying uh, risk indices to understand where your vulnerabilities are as a, from, from the perspective of natural disaster risk or macroeconomic risk or geopolitical risk, so that you can understand where your vulnerabilities are and, and take some steps to, to do some scenario planning around how you can either mitigate those or uh, multi-source them out of your supply chain or, or take multiple different measures to, to understand more about why things are happening as opposed to just that they are happening. Well, what does it mean to be defensive? Does it mean that you're able to handle what comes down the pike and or you're able to prevent it from happening in the first place to your company? Or does it mean that you're in a better, uh, a better situation to deal with it when it happens as it inevitably might? Well, I mean, I think it's both. I think the, I think the, the preventing it is kind of the third stage. And that, and that goes into, you know, understanding the root causes. Uh, digging, digging much deeper into your supplier's capabilities around business continuity and their management systems. And then also, you know, mo digging down deeper into the, the tiers of the supply chain. So mm -hmm. you understand where the dependencies are further down the supply chain. And that's really how you prevent, prevent disruptions. Okay, but so now we're talking about it was defensive, reactive, and now we're talking about proactive. Right, exactly. So the next step up, uh, to talk, tell me a little bit more about just what that entails. Yeah, so I mean, I think the, the first step is as, as having that kind of a scalable data, data collection mechanism. Um, so not only be having you know, some resources to collect data, but also platforms to analyze that data and, and turn that data into information um, so that you can actually take action on it. Um, I mean, and then that's not forgetting about, you know, monitoring and, and defending and having best practices and crisis response, but it's really a journey that, that starts with that monitoring and ends with having multi-tier visibility and then having a, an analytical platform to deal with all that data so that you're internal supply chain people can, can, uh, can take action on it. What is important here? I mean, we're talking about technology, obviously, as a very important aspect, but what do you think, where, where do people fit into this? And how important are people to making all of this work, no matter how good your technology is? Well, I mean, it's a three-legged stool. I think it's, it's the data um, and collecting that data. It's the technology, but it's also the people and the processes, right? So you can't, you can't take data and not have a way to, to utilize that data and transform that data in, into information, but you also have to have people that are, that are trained and sound processes to take that, that data um, and use it to, to drive business value. So uh, whether that's in the form of you know, mitigation or um, risk governance at the, at the corporate level or you know, just, the, just having a, a defined um, and capable event response process such that you can react more quickly than your competition and, and secure supply and, and prevent premiums from being paid. Okay, so let's look ahead to the next couple of years. What should companies be preparing themselves for? In other words, what is going to happen in the next couple of years that companies are not preparing themselves for? Well, I, mean, I, think, I think there's really a, a, a large open question around cybersecurity in, in, in particular. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, your, your typical supply chain and procurement professional has no idea what their supply chain is. Um, is is vulnerable to from a, from a cybersecurity perspective, nor do they really understand what the, the downstream consequences can be for their, for their greater organization. Um, so being able to bring those, those, the IT organizations together with the supply chain organizations to, to collaborate on addressing the, the cyber threats that, uh, that occur in the supply chain. I mean, mm -hmm. we saw you know, target, the target breach a couple years ago was caused by a supplier. Um, we, we see, you know, we've, we've seen cyber threats double in supply chains over, over the past year. Um, and it's only going to get worse. Um, and I think I think the the real key is to take a to take a very um, impact specific approach, right? So you really have to understand the management systems of your suppliers down multiple tiers to make sure that they are doing the right things with regard to multiple types of threats. Because you know cyber is what we're talking about today, 
Um, but, you know, in the future, you know, who knows what it could be? I mean, we live in a very uncertain political environment today. Um, we live in a, you know, a constantly evolving state of technological change, um, and the threats are not dissipating there. They're, they're definitely worsening and, and getting much more, more frequent. So Matt, those are several very, very good recommendations and critical steps that companies should be taking today, especially those that are falling behind in realization of the importance of supply chain management risk. Thank you so much for being with us today to talk about this. Great, thanks for having me. I have been talking with Matt Mills of Resilink. Thank you very much for watching.